sixties and seventies and four thousand seven hundred years ago. And I had our kids, kids are out of college, and we moved to Lodge House and we started with them, so we moved back down here. We came back here in 2013, we moved into the first floor apartment where my father was going. Um, it's a one floor, it had a kitchen, bedroom, living room, and a be uh, bathroom. It's about 750 square feet. It wasn't enough to live me. For two and a half years, we looked at it, we lived in it, and came up with a plan to build it. We were going to go down to the basement, which already existed, um, do some work which was all non structural. All the walls were there. We were getting new walls and nothing on the outside. Um, we plan to retire in this apartment. Um, we have no plans to sell the building, no plans to ever make condos. But I plan on leaving it to my daughters when we go. Um, uh, we've been working with Maria Lanza, who sent out all the butter information. Um, we've gone to all the meetings and we're hoping that the work we're doing will be approved. Currently, as I said, it's one floor and we'll be making it two floors. It's not really a basement, it's, uh, it's actually a street level. And uh, the bedroom and the master bath will be downstairs. The kitchen, living room, and dining room will be the first floor with a half bath. And we hope that we can uh, get approval. We have a I guess uh, the problem is because the apartments are a little larger now, the area ratio between the overall park and the two lots, which we weren't aware of there originally, all we would the rest of the time. Thank you. Council, any questions? John, do you have the results of the interview? Okay. Uh, where are we? Can you hand those out? From August 30th. Yep. Do you want to speak to the advisory meeting they had on the 30th? Yes, we have the advisory meeting. Um, Maria could be there because she was sick, but um, Sydney all came down and there were, um, uh, we had three abutters um, uh, come down. There was no objection whatsoever. Everybody liked the floor plan that we showed them and what was being done there. The work is two thirds done when we found out that we had this problem. So it's been stopped for the last few months. Is there any uh, sprinklers? The building does not have any sprinklers. So you have to do it as part of it? <coughs> we're only doing the first floor parking. Okay, and then is there a second way out of the building? Oh, yes. There's actually three ways out of the building. We have fire escapes, which uh, will land into the tunnel, and we have the tunnel that they can get out uh, going out to Garden Cliff Street, Washington Street, and then into the basement. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. 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 I, I just, I lived in Frank's building for five years uh, back in the day. Exactly. Yeah, the gentleman yeah, yeah. very well. And it's uh, from the last thing you and Gloria still have a building that's not in terms of condos. They're keeping people there. And um, I, uh, I'm glad to see you back. So, thank you, Sir. Anyone from the uh, audience? All right. We're going to vote on this and then uh, reveal the results of the meeting. Thank you very much. Seeking uh, support from uh, the Northern Waterford Neighborhood Council. Really, I think the description is a little deceiving. It says go from four, and I'll explain it why it's going from four units to 17 units. And you look at it and you say, how, how big it, could that be? You know, it's a big building, you know. But really, we're confirming the occupancy at 17 residential units and two commercial spaces. Colin purchased the building in May, and when filed plans to do just a, a renovation of the building. Um, however, when once we file the, the application for the renovation, get the permit for the renovation, it, there was no occupancy on record that reflects what's actually there. So 
the address goes from 278 to 284 North Street. For those who are not familiar with that site, um, this building here, the 278 building, 284 building, which is the former, if you might, might know here, the former location of Dallas Toys, and then a building from the back, which would be, this building would be back here. Right, so. here's North Street. There's a alley under there. Is that 288? Right, yeah. Right. Right. So, right. between the three buildings sit on one parcel of land, and right now there are 17 one bedroom units. Um, the common parts of the property are in this array. Uh, this, they were structurally, they were, they were unsound. Colin uh, got the building, and the building has been structurally uh, sound now, and it wants to confirm the occupancy to what's existing. The only thing that's changing is the floor plans. Right now, the 17 one bedroom. Uh, we've created some additional living space, and, and the reason why we've created some additional living space is because there's an existing stairwell that's in the middle. These two buildings connect right above the, the, uh, the opening that goes underneath them, so we took down the stairwell. So we're able to gain some square footage change the existing uh, floor plan. Um, and, and while in doing so doesn't create any violations, what we're seeking relief from for the ZBA is three things. One is a roof structure. Roof structure, nothing's changing on the roof other than we're putting new mechanicals that are going on the roof. By putting new mechanicals on the roof, you're creating a roof structure violation. So we need relief from the, the zoning boards because we violated that uh, zoning code. The, about 5418. The other two violations is the open space and the Austrian parking. Because there is no occupancy that states that it's 17 units, and what we found was long form that said there's four units. We found one that says six units in the store, one that says seven units in the store. And I'll explain why I think that it happened. So it looks like we're increasing the occupancy. So with that, everybody knows once you increase the occupancy, you get hit with every unit, you have an off-street parking, you have to have a parking spot, and open space, you have to have 100 square feet of open space. But we're really doing nothing to the facade of the building, um, nothing to the roof other than the mechanicals, but the existing conditions are remained the same. The only thing that's changed is the floor plan. So you, you, you look like you have a question. Yeah, one question right one. Is this three jackets or one? It's one. It's one. 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 So it's formerly three. It's so three buildings. Three separate buildings, and formerly people have been pulling permits with separate um, uh, addresses. There are actually three entrances into this one. They're not all connected. The two fronts have it's 270, uh, uh, 278, and then there's an entrance around the front, and then there's an end entrance around the uh, once you're walking the alleyway. So there are really three entrances into the. But well, when you bought it, were, the city considered one building with. Three residential units, so four residential units, and one commercial unit. It didn't even say com uh, commercial; it just said four. So whoever filed it last wrote the correct address that included everything, yeah. but only wrote four units. So what it looks like it happened: uh, the buildings are on the 278-284 on North Street, and that includes all three buildings. It looks like every time somebody did work on the, the former owner. They did work on this building, which is the 284 building. They put it down as six residential units in a store. If they did work here, three residential um, uh, units. Never really included all of the buildings. So you'll find different long farms with different occupancies. So there's really nothing that covers all of them, which is the 17 one bedroom residential units. So really what we're doing is confirming, confirming, uh, confirming the units that uh, they, uh, we changed the floor plan. Um, there was something we went to uh, an abutters meeting. Um, no one appeared at the abutters meeting. And the reason why no one appeared is because Colin has done a good job meeting with the abutters in advance. We met with the Petrino family, met with the Olsen family. The Petrinos are at 292 North Street. Olsen's are at 290 North Street. They met with the Mentola family, which is on the building here on the Lewis and North Street. And uh, the Mentola family, there's no opposition to. Um, work that uh, Colin's, Colin's doing. Um, the floor plans have changed, so I'll start with, and I'll pass it on to Ben at some point if there's some questions as to why. So these 
is back building. There was eight one bedroom residential units. Um, they were probably around 395 square feet uh, to a little, a little bit more, 420. I gave you an analysis of the, the current and the proposed um, square footage. They're making them studio apartments rather than one bedroom, a little bit smaller for the one bedroom. So uh, just making studio apartments, keeping eight residential units, but studio apartments. You can see the little floor plan has, has um, proposed, as confident that everything's high quality. Um, these, uh, they're going to be rentals, but you know, they're going to be high quality in case it's a condo conversion. Um, the, this front building, 284, there's six one bedroom units and one storefront. That's the phone location of Dallas Toy. That's about 1,100 square feet. That's not changing. It's going to remain commercial space, 1,100 square feet. The six one bedrooms are going to turn into six two bedrooms. Um, we've, the, right now, the, the existing square footage is around 650 square feet. We've gained some square footage by taking out the stairway. The, the unit's going to be about 670, but how, after speaking with Dan and speaking with Colin, looks like we're gaining some additional square footage. They haven't been measured again, but they will be measured because we have taken down some old studs and old walls that created some additional square feet. Yeah, this building has three residential units, uh, one bedroom, and the storefront, storefront's about 560 60 square feet. Three rooms are made the same, no changes. And these um, bedrooms are about 670 square feet of living space. The proposal was uh, 603 bedrooms for, for these units, uh, three bedrooms, uh, 670 square feet. Um, so, yeah, the concerns that we, we heard at the, the newer meeting was affordable housing with this. Uh, because there's 17 units, but it's, uh, it's subject to the affordability it, um, units for uh, City Hall. And the answer is no, in contact with the DRA and affordable units to give up coming to the, the affordable units, you have to be proposed new units. These aren't new units, they're existing units. So we won't be subject to giving up any units for the affordability um, threshold. However, it's important, but we're not subject to that. Second issue is whether you know the, the size of the units, are, uh, especially in the three bedroom, um, a little bit on the, the smaller side. I know we, we've always come to see units a little bit bigger, but we wanted to present to the neighborhood and to the city of Boston a little change rather than 17 one bedroom units. Uh, Colin felt and the architect felt that 17 one bedroom units we really didn't want to make it look like a dorm 17 units. Um, so. We, Little diversity, the, the, the big enough for a small family, couple, you know, professionals. So, want to provide a little option for the building rather than have 17 more bedrooms. So, we're open to answer any questions. Council members. So, Dan, the, 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 the Porter unit, uh, 278 or 276, uh, those one bedrooms that are at 670 are staying 670. I mean, you're staying one bedrooms at 670? No, the studios. No, no, no. The, 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 three, three, the three units we're talking about. Those are turned into three bedrooms. And, and um, so if you look, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's down system. here. It's this one here. It's yeah, this yeah. one here. So there would be a bedroom here, two bedrooms in the back, kitchen and living space. So if you have the plan, you, should, you can see it. But we're open to any options, uh, any uh, suggestions. I think the vision, I want to give a little background on the vision. When we first saw the building, it was it was dilapidating. Uh, we did a due diligence on um, the structure of the building. It was almost falling down. So we pulled the demo permit immediately and supported the building and we placed uh, the floors, a majority of the floors that are holding the building uh, together so so that we make sure that it's safe. Um, really it's, it's nobody's there, it, it's safe. So the building's not gonna fall down. Um, and then when we were looking at the unit mix with, with Ben and KVA, we wanted, we did not want to offer the same 17 uh, one bedroom where people were living uh, with weird odd layouts um, that people were living in large closets and so it turned into a two bedroom. So we wanted to offer a variety of, of studios, two bedrooms and three bedrooms to the neighborhood. Uh, it's what we've heard from brokers uh, that they're young families, they're young professionals, they're all looking for three bedrooms, however, they can't rent anything uh, because they're not to the quality they're looking for. 
And so we thought this could be an opportunity <coughs> to do that. We're also open to um, changing those into two bedrooms um, based on what we've heard uh, from our last meeting and talking to a Butters. And also I've heard from a Butters that they said, no, I, I like the three bedrooms um, that are renovated, newly renovated. So it's really up to, it's up to you guys on, on what you prefer. Either one option is, is fine with me. But I think on a whole mix perspective on what we can offer with this asset, um, three three bedrooms, um, six, uh, six, six two bedrooms, bedrooms and eight, eight, studios. eight studios would be a very healthy mix for the neighborhood. So just so I'm clear, you're, you're proposing to do a three bedroom in 670 square feet? I believe the, roughly. Right. Yes, well, it would be a little larger because we right. got some square yeah, no, it's, 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 it's very much larger. But that's so why we're, so we're, we could so measure that. Right, again. so I guess my question is, is yeah. that's tight. And, and so how, how big are the bedrooms? They're about bedroom, 100, 100 square foot. 10 by 10, maybe? Or yeah, is it about that. 12 by 8? Right, there's, there's the three bedrooms with one bathroom too? Yeah, there's three bedrooms with one bathroom. Yes. With all due respect, do you honestly think a family would be interested in, in, in moving into a place that small? For a that's what we, we've heard from brokers. That really? they well, be brokers will tell you, I'll tell you whatever you want to hear. But talk to people who actually live in the That's fine. And that's, that's why, why, that's why, and that's why we're open if with the last meeting people have said the same it, it thing. It seems so, like you're yeah. trying to cram in as much as you can at the square foot. Mm -hmm. So we are open feet. to making them two That's totally fine. fine. We could offer a variety. That's what we also offer so we can we can present the plan that there really has a two bedroom, which would eliminate. So if we're looking at this building here, that's the three bedroom. We can eliminate the front bedroom and just and add the two bedrooms in the back. And the reason why, as you can see, that you want to shape both the, the building. So you know, size for two bedrooms. Yeah. 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 Is the ultimate goal to do short-term rentals? Long -term no short-term no. rentals. No Airbnb with yeah. any commitment. You do think that people will stay in units like this long term at least a year? Oh, you yeah. Given yeah. the size. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. No. Yeah, I don't know if, I mean, maybe I can speak to the quality of it, but you can see um, from the rendering, like, we're putting in high quality kitchen appliances, high quality kitchens, full <laughs> tile bathrooms. Um, uh, hardwood floors, so it's it's going to be the type of materials in the unit that would invite long term renters. It's not supposed to be a kind of transit thing. There are people that were renting units, and then, like, not necessarily the owners of the building, but like renters who just sign leases and, and do Airbnb. So, you know. In our addendums, we don't allow Airbnb. Owners so have just very good visual. Thank you. Just specify what uh, mechanical changes going up to the roof. There's a uh, number of condensers. I don't know how many. Uh, and you know. Right. I think there's just, there's one for each unit. So there's right. 17. So they're going along probably the, the front to the back. I think from one street to eighty four all the way back in the middle. And they're uh, uh, they're they're kind of centered in the spine here, so you would never have visual from the ground. So all that's the air conditioning. That's the air conditioning. Yeah. Air conditioning, yeah. So, so that's not right. really not nothing there at the moment. We want to do it to condo grade. We want to put it sprinkler systems. We want to put air conditioning heat um, for each unit, and that's what we're doing, and that's what we're getting. Where are you going to convert to condo? We don't know yet, but the majority. What's well, that? That is the plan. Because the uh, problem is when we got into the building, we found out that you know it kind of surprised to see a lot of major structural issues. So we immediately did the work and that was out of unexpected from us. And so we wanted to do some of that. Um, so you're planning to put more the Down the road. Not, not, not immediately. Not in so it's, how long do you want to plan to keep this rental? It uh, depends on the market. If it's two years from now, it's, it's hard to predict. So it could be soon. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Yes. Well, they're ready. Right? They're sprinkler. They have their own. Uh, condensers. Anything else? Sean, Phil? Audience? Any questions? All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thanks. The next agenda item, we have the battery and warfare representatives to clarify. Uh,
the last meetings and the concerns that we had. Hi everyone, my name is Mike Renwin. I'm an attorney. I'm working with the West Point Battery Board, uh, the Five Battery Board, and the East from the Hotel. Um, and we're here to answer some questions. I think there was a little bit of confusion last time we were before. Uh, and then, uh, basically, what's happened here is uh, implied, uh, the simplest way to say it is, is we're just adding the words live entertainment to the hotel certificate of occupancy. Um, and it'll just allow the hotel, doing that will allow the hotel to continue at the entertainment that they've always had at the hotel, same locations, exact same entertainment license, in fact, that we're going to be applying for. Um, it's just that the mayor's office now requires those two words, live entertainment, on the certificate of occupancy. And when we applied to have those uh, live entertainment added to the CO, even though it's been approved and existing there for years, um, that it, uh, I, it's kind of a technical zoning issue, but it triggered a conditional use for the restaurant, actually, is the zoning matter that was cited. Uh, just because changing the CO in any way triggered this conditional use for the, whole, the restaurant that was existing that was almost grandfathered in. So it's two changes. One that met the mayor's office is requiring that the certificate of occupancy now say live entertainment on it to get a live entertainment license. And two, that the zoning had changed requiring conditional use permit for the restaurant. Um, that's the technical sense of it. Uh, in terms of how it's going to impact the North End, this is strictly the interior of the hotel. It has nothing to do with the outdoor space. Um, the same areas, like I said, will be licensed. It's uh, the ballroom and the hotel main lobby. There's going to be a jazz brunch uh, occasionally, which we're also continuing to see room for. Um, but nothing's changing there. They do this for weddings, any, all the types of things you expect at a hotel, and which they've had there for years, and they're currently still operating. We're currently getting one-day licenses just to kind of bridge the gap. Um, so uh, I apologize for any confusion um, if there was any uh, with this application in the first place, and we're happy to answer uh, any questions that the board has at this time. Council. And from the audience. I'm Rob Martin. I'm a resident of uh, Battery Wharf. I'm also president of the Presidential Condo Association. And uh, you know, Rick told me in support of this. And so he was in the interior space. We were just done for the eight years, which I've been there since the beginning. And uh, it was a little confusing in some of the technicalities and so on and so on. But it was very comfortable. Thank you, Mike. Anyone else? All right. Please uh, send in your ballots. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so then, this this month we want to provide an update with the cycle track that's been going on. So we asked. Uh, Kevin Mark Smith, and I believe uh, we have Boston. Uh, so if you guys could just come on up. Uh, basically how we've done this in the past with our community chats is sort of provide us with an update of what's going on, and then we can offer you feedback as to what we've seen in the neighborhood. As you know, this is uh, something that was um, forced upon us, uh, and it, it was just kind of told us this is what's going on over there, so that was tough from the start. Uh, but we're hoping that with the completion and the, the traffic patterns that have resulted and things like that can be discussed so that we can make sure that it's not a danger to anyone. Um, so why don't I start? I'm Kay Barnett Smith. I'm the project manager for the city for the construction. So I'm going to say right off, any design issues, it's all been installed. <laughs> but I can tell you where we are with construction, what's going to be coming up. Uh, I've heard uh, comments about too many parking spaces being taken. I will go back and check on that. We're very limited in the number of spaces that we can take uh, per BTD, Boston traffic uh, requirements. So if that's being um, abused, I will check on it for my, uh, in terms of our construction. Uh, one thing to realize, one of the, the big uh, tasks 
of managing the construction is that um, today I am trying to coordinate between between the work that's the work started at Stanford Street, way down um, uh, near Lowell Square, and uh, the work that we're doing on Commercial Street is Volume Two. But the two pieces of work are happening simultaneously. And uh, in this past year and a half, since the project has started, I'm trying to coordinate between about 15 different projects that are all trying to do work in one or the other of those areas, plus trying to get people in to clean carpets, people in who need to replace their windows, people who need to move in or move out. So part of the traffic jam has to do with, you know, I try and look at where we are and then when it works for those people to take a, 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 some parking spaces. Um, but there's just a lot going on that, um, you know, we have to try and accommodate because these are the people who make up the, the neighborhood. Where we are uh, in terms of the construction is we have replaced uh, sidewalks and installed the cycle track from Charter Street to Hanover. We are now in the block between Hanover and Battery, and, uh, which we expect to complete in the next week or so, and then we will be moving from Battery to Eastern Ave. Uh, by the, the City of Boston has a construction moratorium for horizontal projects, roadway projects, that uh, says we can work until November 15th. Uh, that, that's flexible because like last year we had a very mild winter so we were able to work into December. We don't know what's going to happen this year but we're kind of anticipating we'll be able to work a little bit beyond that, uh, that date. Um, but that's predicated on when you can pour asphalt and when you can install concrete temperatures get to a certain point and it becomes too difficult to do that. Um, so sometime uh, so sometime in November, December we hope to be almost to Eastern Ave uh, with new sidewalk and cycle track installed. Um, middle to end of October we will be paving from we will install a whole new roadway from Prince Street to at least Hanover, we're hoping we're going to get to Battery. So that's a totally new roadway, new, uh, new striping, uh, and we will also have a number of intersections for new traffic signals in. Uh, the work has been going slowly, so I understand the frustration. It's been very frustrating for my department as well. Part of the problem is that we are under a requirement uh, to upgrade the drainage system uh, so that we both separate out stormwater and sewage and we also provide enough percolation for stormwater. It's been very hard to get the drainage <coughs> structures in that we need. We basically have had to redesign almost every structure because there's so many utilities in the road. So that's slowed down our work. The other thing is that we're putting in new mast arms, you know, that that have the traffic signals on them. Um, each one of those foundations, uh, almost each one has had to be redesigned or relocated again because of the existing utilities in the ground. So that has just really slowed down construction and has caused some of the um, jams that we've seen out there. Um, we go, um, let me see, I think we go to North Street. So, all new sidewalks to about North Street on the water side. Um, on the land side, what we're doing it pretty much are the, just the intersections themselves where we're putting in new wheelchair ramps. We're bumping <coughs> out the curb so that there's a better um, bear, uh, distinction between parking areas and travel lanes. Uh, and that and then when we get to North Street, uh, we still do, are doing the bump outs, but we're doing less of uh, new sidewalks because in some of those locations we have like brick sidewalks, so we're trying to retain some of the more historic character in some locations. Um, 
and then where we need to put in new ramps um, with sidewalks really deteriorated and we're replacing them. Um, I don't expect the work, the contractor said he expects to get to uh, Cross Street by July of next year. I'm not counting on that. I'm really thinking we're going to go through the next construction season to finish the project um, in the middle of that. So I will go back and check on this parking issue. Um, I'm going to leave my cards uh, so that if anyone has any complaint or any concern, please call me. Uh, if you go on to the public, depart, uh, public Works Department website, I have a three-week look ahead that says every street, what we're doing at every street. I update that you know, every third week so you know what the next three weeks are. There's also, a, I have a separate number that's just for people who have complaints and they want someone to pay attention to it. Also, Boston 311, you got a complaint, you got a concern, call in there, they'll separate it out to my queue. And um, I think, you know, pretty much I try and call everyone back if they have a problem, and I try and resolve the problem. So that's what I can tell you. And then I'm going to let Vinit answer any design questions because they just hired me to build it. I didn't design it. So. Any council members have any questions? Yes. Um, uh, one second. Go ahead, George. So I want to know, you're building the bike lanes and so the street where the cars can go is getting smaller. How come the sidewalks are getting bigger? Uh, I'm uh, Vinit Gupta with the Boston Transportation Department. Thank you for inviting me here, here to listen to you and take back the suggestion and so that we can. So thank you. The, uh, may I answer that? Absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the number of lanes, travel lanes, is exactly the same as it was, as it was before construction started. The number of parking spaces would be actually maybe a couple might increase compared to what was there before. All that we've done is taken the two five feet bike lanes that used to be there a year ago, combined them and put them on the sidewalk. So there used to be three lanes. Two lanes in one direction and one lane in the other. That's exactly the same. The dimensions of those lanes are exactly the same. In fact, they might be half a foot larger. So that's how those two five feet that you have have been combined on the sidewalk on the waterfront side. The curb line on the neighborhood side is exactly where it was before. Yeah, that curb line is the same, but the yellow line in the middle of the street has been moved over. That should have, we haven't done the repaving yet, so those lines have not been used. And from the corner of Charter Street to Commercial Street, when you're taking that right, that lane's been moved over. And when I'm driving, I know other people are driving, sure. that's a hard right turn to take when other cars yeah. are on the other side of the lane. Awesome, awesome. And at the same time, you're talking about the width of the street. After the five foot lanes were put in place, there were two lanes on each side prior to that. So, okay, three travel lanes and two cycle lanes prior to that. Sir, exactly. prior to the cycle lanes, lanes, sir. But prior exactly. to the cycle lanes, there were two lanes going in right. this direction. So, these cycle lanes and right. the cycle lanes, so, so there were actually, for the record, there were two lanes in one direction okay. and two lanes on the other one. So, there were four lanes, so we lost one lane. Okay. Four bicycle lanes. Right. Okay. And the sidewalks are, in essence, are getting bigger. On the side um, in front of Felipe's restaurant, it's the sidewalk's being redone, curb line was moved over, because now the light pole is right in the middle of the sidewalk. And that's taking a lot of street room that, I mean, let's be honest here, cars are getting bigger, the streets around here are pretty tight. And that's really hard to drive down. The concern has been the, the safety issue of while this construction is going on and the, and the different traffic patterns that are emerging. And the necessity. But nothing is, nothing is, it doesn't, it's not clear over there with the construction. And the necessity, what is the, the necessity to have such an elaborate bicycle lane feature on Commercial Street, a main access road to the north end and the rest of the city?
you know, one of the things that we notice here as residents is that we're coming on brand new, huge arteries that bring you into the city. Then you get into the city and the traffic jam is amazing because when you start taking five feet here, five feet there, five feet somewhere else, where are those cars going? You know what I mean? It happens on Cross Street, it happens on, on North Washington Street, it's happening on Commercial Street, it's happening everywhere. And the reality of it is, is I don't know if anybody's seen a huge increase in people who are leaving their cars at home and commuting bicycles, but nobody's seen it. So, you know, I, I, we understand the fact that there's money for lights, there's money for crosswalks, there's money for this, there's money for that, but at what expense? On a project that's already taking one year, it's going to take another year, and we're not going to have bicycle lanes usable until the spring of 2018. You know? And here in the North End, I don't know if you noticed, and anybody in the audience has noticed, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, between the hours of 3.30 and 4 o'clock, when rush hour starts, there are no cars driving through the North End. Why not? Because we're surrounded by a belt of traffic. Mm. And nobody wants to come into the neighborhood. All right? So it, it's not helping us. You know, it, but by any means, and, you know, and I hope that there are millions of people that are drive those bicycles around, but we haven't seen them yet. We're not in China. Well, have they done a study on how many people they think are going to use the bike lane? Yeah, we've done some counts before to get an idea, and then once the bike lane is open, you know, we've done some estimates. Bike ridership in Boston is increasing four times every year, year after year after year. So by 2013, 10%, 8 to 10% of all people who, that's in 15 years, of all people who, uh, who travel on our street will be on bikes. That's the same in Cambridge, it's about 6% already. And so that's the direction things are going. So why did they build it so early? I'm sorry? Why did they build it, why did they build it so early? Why did they build it 15 years before the 2030? Like, if it's not that many people are using it now, why did they build it already? It can uh, increase steadily in the coming years. I don't see it. I'll be honest with you. Anyone else in the council? I'm, 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 I, have I, have a, I have one more question. I have one more question. Sure. If bike riders don't use the bike thing, so they're going to be fine? Uh, That's a critical question. Yeah, I think that the, the bicyclists will, for the most part, be on the new cycle track. Oh. Uh, they, the, the, you know, if I, if I wrote the law, I would find them. No, but the law is. Law is, law is, law is, is it mandatory to drive on the cycle track? Yeah, that's what he's asking. I'm, I'm no, saying that the law, the law doesn't make it mandatory. But another, so another. Why, why have to, it's like driving on the sidewalk. We're going to drive in the street because the street's for the car. Yeah. So why would a bicyclist not drive on the cycle lane? Bicyclists would prefer to ride on the new cycle track because it will be safer for them. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm asking you, why, if they're going to spend all this money to build it, why is it not going to be mandatory? Like I said, if I was setting the rules, I would make it mandatory, but we have to go with the state law, and that allows bicyclists. Let me ask you another question. What, is, <coughs> what does it cost? of that stretch. What is the budget for that stretch? I don't know the exact amount. But how do we not know that exact amount, folks? You're coming over with information. We'd like to know how much it's going to cost. Is that money worth spending? I, I, can get the, I, I don't know off the top of my head. I can find it. A million, million, two million, ten million? Well, the, the, entire, the entire project is the total reconstruction of the street, including... Okay, what is the project? What is the so the project? total project that goes, it's, it's five different neighborhoods in Boston. It's, it's a, from Lowell Square to Kimi Square. It's Commercial Street from uh, North Washington to uh, Cross Street. It's the Blackstone Block. It is uh, Constitution Road in Charleston. And it's Joy Street. So there are five different. What is the cost? The entire cost is a $20 million project. So $5 million is the cost for our portion of the bicycle. Uh, um, how it's broken down by volume, I don't have that book with me, but volume one and two, which is Stanford Street to Keeney Square and then Keeney Square to Cross Street, are the two, those are the two biggest pieces of work. But it's not, we're putting, a, it's not just the cycle track. It's on your side. No, no, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah, no, so I mean, it's not going to be a George, I'm just going to finish it. I'm going to finish it. Excuse me, I asked a question. I know, but she's, she's trying to answer my question. question. She's trying to yeah. answer it. So, but but, 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 but when you turn, John, you ask your question, then answer my question. Let her answer the question. I'm not interrupting. Okay, period. So, in terms of 
if uh, volume two, which is what Commercial Street is, if that is a uh, six million dollar portion of the contract, then I'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll get these exact numbers for you. Um, that that includes all the drainage work that we've done, underground work, all the new wiring for traffic signals and um, pedestrian lights. It's uh, we're basically taking out all the old roadway, putting in new new roadway for mm -hmm. mass up specifications. Uh, and then we're, it's all this driving and then we're putting in the cycle traffic. So what that portion, how much the cycle traffic itself uh, costs, I, I think I can break out the numbers for you, but I don't I don't have that. Oh, I find it amazing though, because yeah. I know this money we don't keep. That's how much to George's point, but to George's point, so let's say the cycle tracks didn't go in, but the other workers still have, have to have been done. Um, now that's, I'm not sure how the grant was written, so part yeah. of this is funded yeah. by the Federal Highway, and I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the Federal sure. Highway grant was for cycle track, but we insisted that this way bring the cycle track, we were going to be the entire road, because it didn't make sense just to do the sidewalk site. So as part of this project, as uh, he mentioned, you know, it's drainage, it's new traffic lights, it's uh, complete repairing of the entire street to, to put in new markings, uh, and you know, some safety measures on the neighborhood side. So uh, we just took advantage of the uh, federal opportunity to do the cycle track, but the money was for the cycle track. Uh, as you know, as he mentioned, that continues on to Causeway Street and the middle one. Again, we have money to do the entire street. Danielle? Uh, I have a construction question and safety comment, I guess. Um, yeah. Construction question, I know that you are running behind and you're running things, but from what I heard, when you stop the season, is it going, is any part of it going to be usable? And what's the condition that it's going to be left in until? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's a good question. So here's the thing, there will be portions of the cycle track that can be used. Um, and it's really up to the powers that be. I mean, I think the idea is, you know, they'll sort of be unofficially open for use, but um, there, there will be a formal opening of the entire cycle track when we're close to being, being finished. Um, so I'm, I'm not really quite sure, you know, that sort of, Whatever that pay level is above me, we'll take that into account. But we'll have a substantial amount of it complete by the end of this construction period. And then it's, is it safe to let any of it be used before we've got all the bike? Because the whole cycle track also has its own signalization. Yeah. So we're really, the whole point of the cycle track is that we really begin to treat bicycles like cars. So they have, to, you know, they have their own stoplights, they have their own pedestrian I mean, pavement markings and, and and that group of people will decide what's safe to use, what isn't safe to use. And I think we'll say, the, the other part of that though is in the meantime, over the winter, what's going to be done about traffic patterns that are currently there which are unsafe. Okay. Uh, well I think by the time winter comes we will have kind of the whole new roadway markings and system in place to um, Battery Street. And then whatever's going on beyond that will be pretty incidental so that we'll be transitioning from the old, whatever that traffic pattern is there to the new traffic pattern. But that new traffic will be in before we close up the shop. Welcome to Danielle. Uh, the winter time when it snows, they're going to plow them, salt them, going to be taking a pile of snow on them, what are they going to do? On the cycle track? Yes. Um, depends on whether any of it's open. So the question is, will the cycle track close on the winter months? Once it's open, once it's open, once it is all open and it, it, it opens to the public. It will never close. It will never close, so it will be plowed, it will be maintained, yeah, it will be what, sorted, yeah. all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And who pays for that? That comes from our maintenance budget. The so city. the city is renting the, the budget? Yeah. Yeah. Signal, signaling was actually my other comment, so that's helpful to know. But I've, I've gotten a lot of calls about this actually from residents who live at Commercial Wharf, where if you're calling on Commercial Wharf, 
yes. as is, it's very difficult to see. And I'm really concerned of what that's going to look like, Union more all the way down to boroughs and battery. And I guess the, my question is, they're signaling, which means that, you know, bikes will have to stop at certain places. You know, I ride a bike every once in a while, and bikes like to be bikes when it's convenient. They like to yes. be treated like cars when it's convenient, right? And you, you have to pick one or the other. So, I mean, I, I don't know about enforcement-wise, but is there any way you could um, publish that, like the signalization, anything that shows that for the public to see? Because I think that's a big concern for a lot of people. Well, I think... There'll be signage. Yeah, there'll be well, signage. Well, I'm saying at this point of construction, like on your website, <coughs> could there be a place that publicly residents could go and see what that's going to look like? It might ease up a little bit of the concern. Yeah, I think safety. that we can do that. I mean, that's that's that would be very helpful. I think the, the initial proposal of what this project is going to be is still available. Um, we certainly can upload um, the final construction plan. The other thing is I've specifically uh, met with people from Commercial Board to talk about their concerns and, and it kind of we're trying to figure out how they're, you know, they have some other issues besides just going in and out, but I have met specifically with them and when they come up, I'll go out and meet with them, and then if it's a design issue, I'll go back to the team and say, this has come to our attention, what do you want us to do about it? I have one last question. Just when I, I just think that since this is kind of a new concept for people, it's hard for them to visualize. And that was even my question, do they have signals in pipe lanes, right? So, yeah, I can send you an email if you could send yeah, it over please, that. Please, anyone, uh, I'm, I'm happy to send you things individually, or, you know, uh, I know we've We've put some things in the North End newsletter. Anything that helps people understand it better, I think it's happy to do that. I have one more question. If, this, if the study turns out that bike use exponentially grows over the next few years, where is it going to put their bikes? Are they going to be on sidewalks, just hopped up? I mean, if everybody buys a bike, where are they going to put it? I mean, I mean they're going to, yeah. I mean, they're going to be bikes everywhere? I come into North by bike, and I, I stuff that bike right. in my living room. So, okay, but not everybody's going to do it. But I agree with you 100% this is a ridiculous project. But it's, it's a ridiculous project. They're going to be all over the street. The reason why I find it to be a ridiculous project is because when did the public speak up for bike lanes? When? Where was the outcry for bike lanes? That's what I, that's what I ride my bike all the time, winter, summer, spring, or fall. I will not get on a bike lane. I'm all set. I'm not interested. The moment I get a ticket uh, for driving my bicycle freely, I'm going to be very mad. But what I don't understand is where was the public outcry? For bike lanes. Nowhere. This was just another way for government to say, we got money, we're going to be spending. In the meantime, those of us who are driving cars, paying taxes, are driving through potholes, destroy streets, and we have streets in the North End that haven't been properly paved in decades. All right? And we're grabbing the main avenue of access to our community, and we're trumping it with bicycle lanes that don't make any sense, that nobody asked for. We have a great government. When we ask for the things we want, we don't get them. We want them because the money you spent is ours. Okay? When we don't want them, you shut them down our throat. For 6% of the population that is minute in Massachusetts. All right? Oh, and that's the hopes of 6%, because I remember clearly when they first came up with the pilot program to paint those two bicycle lanes five feet on each side, and the assumption was that 2% of the population was going to use it. All right? That's, that is a number that is not worth investing money for. All right? Plain and simple. You know, for a frivolous thing as bicycle lanes. Right? Because that's why it's all it is. It's just, it's just it, it, it is. It is. It's unfortunate. In a country that has that is $20 trillion in debt, we just borrowed $24 million to put bicycle lanes in Boston. It's a joke. I have one more question. Are these <laughs> all five neighbors? Are they going to connect some way, in some way? Like, if you drive your bike from point A to point B with one horse? Really? Really? I'm really? going to ask the lady. I want to ask the woman. So, um, the cycle track that, that starts, so it starts at Stanford for this project, starts at Stanford, comes down, goes behind the path, continues on down Commercial Street, comes out behind the point, continues down or depending on which way the company continues down Commercial Street. It also will connect into uh, the North Washington Bridge is also having, will have a cycle track from Charlestown that ultimately uh, 
um, connections with the Constitution route. So, um, so Blackstone it, block is not really cycle track. Blackstone route block is reconfiguring some of that. The other part of this is um, an accessible path through the city. So we're putting in all concrete sidewalks. That's really a, 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 an ADA um, path. Um, and so the Blackstone block, what we're doing is really improving accessibility issues. No cycle track involved at all. Joy Street is also is really a pedestrian access issue from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. There's no cycle track involved. It's just Constitution Road and then so no, so some, you're saying some, but not all. Not all. So we're going to be eyes on So you come down the stand the street on the bicycle track, and then it comes up to North Washington, the track? So what happens is it comes up, uh, it comes across, down Causeway, connects into the Love Joy. So my question is, if you're coming down Carrera Street on the bike track, and you take on left on North Washington, it's fair game, you just go back to the middle of the street. No, the North Washington Street Bridge is going to have... No, no. If we take on left, you come out instead of taking our way out. Go going south. Ain't all right. All <laughs> so it's fair game to go back into the street. Right. Doesn't even make sense to cycle track. It's only from that little stretch and you go back into the street. So it's just watch it just leave in the street. <coughs> if you're not going to stand up for the If you're not going to oh, if you're not going to Causeway Street, you're not going to Charlestown, you want to go left down North Washington to go wherever you want to go, you're gonna go back into the street at some point. Correct? <laughs> On the button? I don't making sense? Yeah. If you're going to City Hall Plaza from Commercial Street, you're not going to a bike. Right, if you're coming down, you're yeah, maybe, you know. But you're just going to go back into the street. So what's the, I mean, I have no time to figure out what the point of the bike like is just on that stretch of, land, of street if the rest of the city's not going to add that. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, you wouldn't take a left out of North Washington so you continue on. No, no, no. If, if you want to follow the path, but if you don't want to follow the path and you want to go somewhere else on your bicycle, you're going to be back in the middle of the street. Yes. I'm just, I don't want to hurt you. You know, right? if you get off the cycle track, you get off the cycle track, you know. It's but that's what I'm saying. So, are they, is there a plan to put more cycle tracks in the city? Like, every street going to be inconvenient? Is every street ready? Right. I think that, like, like you point out, not every street. I'm is asking you, is there a plan to build? There is, there is a, so every street is just the beginning. There is a plan to look at other streets that we have. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's the beginning. We have uh, sort of the network that people can try to well, that's next. Well, the goal is they should ride a bicycle. One, no, the goal is that once that the regular streets are destroyed, we're all gonna have to ride a bicycle. There's no more people to ride. All right. That's, 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 I wanted to say one thing. I lived in the city in Italy for a year when I started abroad. That had cycle tracks, and old people, young people, everybody used it because it's safe. In this this bike path on Commercial Street, I consider myself still pretty young. When I use my bike on it. It's terrifying. It's scary. Your head's on a swivel because you think you can get run over by a Mack truck. So yeah. I think this is great. I think you know if you build it, it will come. People will ride their bikes more. Every every street in the city can't afford it, but that stretch can, and it's great that it's coming. Yeah, the the traffic is really bad right now, and it's inconvenient because it's being constructed. But in the long run, it's going to be awesome. But Ralph does raise a good point. We need more places to put bikes. And, and in the uh, walk-up apartment on the fifth floor, you're not going to bring your bike up. It's going to be on the sidewalk. It's going to be in the pole in front of your house. It's going to inconvenience everybody on the sidewalk. It's so illegal to put it on a pole, and there's bike, not enough bike, bike racks. Yeah, and I think part of uh, some of the, the widest uh, sidewalks, mm -hmm. there are a number of places where you um, Bicycle racks. Bicycle racks. We also require every new development now in the city mm -hmm. to provide one off-road bicycle, secure bicycle parking space for every unit. Mm -hmm. Because that's required by law. Okay. So this laws that will be very expensive soon. Bicycle lockers, mm -hmm. parking. More, more yeah, expensive than we have today. Try to, because we have to make sure we have something. It's a problem now. It's only going to get worse if people. Wait, if this is successful, and I think it will be. Every new. Building that goes up is going to have bike. Every brand new construction. 
So it's a one-stop bus station. We all have it. That's going to be another part of code that we have to fulfill: having bicycle lockers in buildings. Well, you were talking about the fact that where all these bicycles go, and we want to make sure that they're safe. That's a good idea, though. I really do. I'd like to open up to that. It's we must tell the council members. Every development is required to, to supply so many new parking spaces. Of course. Of course. So well, yeah, developers have the money to pay for all this, uh, the silly things. Why not? Can I have a question for the audience? Yep. Uh, Miriam is a group. Um, Miriam is not a nice place. Um, I don't totally agree with these bike lanes, to be honest. But I work on Staniford Street. Mm -hmm. Stanford Street, uh, I believe, is done for the most part. I don't see any more construction work. Well, it's very close. <laughs> yeah, I, but if anybody wants to see what they look like, go to Stanford Street. That's what you'll see. That's what you'll get through the down the road. How's that look? I think the road is fine. I hate the bike lanes. The road is great. Oh, thank you. Look, um, I live on 130 Fulton Street. In the, Yellowing across <coughs> of uh, Chava Street. Everybody's been talking this temporary. But if you drive on the weekend when there's no truck in the vehicle, you see that there's cars parked there, okay, against the cycle lane. So kind of imagining how it's going to be in the future, okay. So wait, yeah. so now if you look at it with car two two lanes on this side, the way it's set up now, and the yellow lane's not going to adjust much to the right. It's going to be very hard for you guys to do that. So which means we're going to live with the way it is now. Now that poses a lot of problems. I don't know if you've been following like, well, another one of our news and all that. We had an incident where there was a bus that popped there. Okay? Cars now have to go into oncoming traffic to get around the bus. It's not going to Now, I, I drove, drove down the road. I seen city trucks using that to double park. to go do um, park over there, change trash barrels. Cause more problems. How about the winter time comes? Well, I was come down there. I drove, I drove behind a truck. A truck can't really, it's right on top of all of the mirrors, side mirrors, and it's kind of leaking over into the yellow. So now the cloud comes down there and someone's shoving out their car. I mean, there's big safety issues. I mean, it's part of the history. A couple of years ago, we had that major crash, two people died. A couple of years ago, uh, Go for the back, hold the general driver the moped, it was a double parked car, the general passed away with that. It's a very dangerous area. You can't see how much of an adjustment you can make to keep on being temporary. In the north end, we have temporary and it all of a sudden becomes permanent. And then you, you guys disappear and we're stuck with it. I just don't know who to complain to. I mean, I, I, I talked to, thank God, you know, I talked to John Pregman to try and get this, and you guys are here now. What happens when this quickly who do we go to? Because we know there's going to be a permanent fixture there. We're going to be stuck. And this could be injuries. Eight to say, there will be injuries. And how do we fix? Because now it's stuck. So I don't know who can give me an answer now, or if you want my phone number to call me, because I will admit, I am pretty pissed off about this, because I'm driving down this, and they're not that they're wrong, man. It's getting wrong. And you know, it's getting wrong for future. Bicycles, but it's it has someone's going to get hurt, and we can't have this in Maple. Can't have you get hurt. Well, in the short term, I'd say whenever you see a that violation, I would call three one one. And then I yeah, think I'm, I'm happy to just you know uh, forward with anybody from the neighborhood council or any resident stand there, and then we can figure out that if we want to change some lane markings, and then the, when the repairing is done and the permanent lanes are installed. Sign it, we can try and see if we can find the right uh, lines to, to put on the street. Yeah, I, think I, I mean, I think the issue that is brought up is that's fine. We, we keep hearing when it's, when it's done, it's going to have traffic lights and, and all these things, but the problem is for the next two years. Right. And, right. and, and lose right. Like, somebody, somebody's going to get hurt there. It's not even a question of what, of if. Right. And, and even, even like I said, when you, finish, when you look at what the finished project could be, it seems like it's going to be like that for the finished project. Yeah, it might be nice. They'll give it a ride bikes. That's great. But I'm just talking about the streetwise. You know, I'm sorry, but that's the winter time. It gets nasty. People shove out their cars. You know, cloud comes down. They don't see them. Boom, gone. You know, and, and this and this and the reason for this is because where someone be shoved, standing to shove a car that was a bike lane. Okay, now. 
cars are on top of them. Yeah, no, you're driving down and you're on top of them. No, you, know, yeah. you know what? It's amazing too. It's no right amazing turn, that we've, we've asked for a bunch of things right. all the time that we need, that we really need. You know, things that we really need in the neighborhood. Okay? And they don't happen. The things that we don't ask for, that we don't need, are the ones that happen. Okay? And keep in mind too that that area of the waterfront, okay? First of all, we're not in a little town in Italy. Most people in Italy don't drive that crash because the little towns were built in town where they want to run cars and the streets are not wide enough. Second of all, that is not the most attractive part of the city. We have a mediocre harbor walk there. We have a swimming pool, a, a hockey rink, a school, and a, uh, a, uh, a baseball field. What's going to happen when the, when, the, when the bicycle lanes reach the school? Well, you have school buses. Okay, that line up there every day to drop off kids in the morning at rush hour and to pick up kids in the afternoon at rush hour. You know, it really has very little thought <coughs> behind it. Other than grabbing the money, spending it, and keeping a bunch of people employed. Okay? Because within reality, the consultation with the, with the community should have taken place before the project was uh, you know, implemented. Because within reality, that is a main access road for all of us. You know? we, it, it, we got Hanover Street, one direction. We got commercial, two directions. We got we, uh, two directions on Hanover Street, one direction on Salem, one direction on Richmond. Okay, we you know we're, 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 it's a very difficult community to get to already, and this is just going to aggravate the problem that it has already. You see it. You guys see it at the end of your project day with the traffic. You know, and again, the other day I'm in front of uh, uh, that, uh, what's it called, the, the, the bar there, uh, the Waterfront Cafe. And there was a bus, a tour bus parked in front of it, and we're all waiting, okay. looking to see if not, whether or not nobody was coming on the other lane to go over. You know, garbage collection. You know, it's not a street that was plotted or designed for one lane in one direction. It was plotted and designed for two lanes in each direction for a reason. You know, it's a main artery. We only have a few minutes left, so I want to make sure the audience gets Yeah, so the garbage truck is definitely an issue. I mean, we're already down to two days a week of garbage, so people have more garbage on Monday and Friday, so it takes longer to collect. This morning, I sat behind a garbage truck almost 10 minutes, and the same thing happened to me where I was waiting. I couldn't see if there was any cars coming in. About five or six cars came by. And then the second thing to think about is more and more of these bike rental places are going to probably pop up with these bike lanes popping up all over the city. Are, are people, like tourists that are coming in on the weekends, are they going to be mandated to be properly trained on bicycle safety? Because I don't think people are probably still going to ride on the street. I don't think people are going to comply with riding the bicycle. And so how do you actually enforce safety? So if there are bike lanes, we be sure that you know people aren't hitting pedestrians, hitting people that are walking their dogs, or running into a car. Do we have any answers for, for any of the traffic and, and safety issues, or do we have to wait another couple months? I, I said I'm happy to talk to the community and see what we can do. We'll follow up after this meeting, and then I'll make sure that everyone's aware of uh, what we can do. I think that, that does need to be addressed. Uh, I've, I've stood there okay. before this meeting a couple of times this month at John Street yep. to, to see what the situation is. All right. We'll have a consultant to look at that. Does anyone else from the audience have any issues or uh, concerns before we read the results of the voting? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ten Moon Street uh, was supporting unanimously. Uh, Barry Wolf Hotel was supporting unanimously. And 278 to 284 North Street was supported 5 to 4. But Council Member Simoli, Roman, Rocky, Benetti, and Grillo support. Council Member Mendoza, Hennessy, D'Ambrosia, and Federal we uphold. All right, thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Remember, uh, October 3rd is our next one.